Good evening. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jane Schodel. I'm the lead programmer for the special presentation section of TIFF. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to tonight's world premiere screening of My Policeman, directed by Michael Grandich. We are pleased to welcome you into the Visa Screening Room at the Princess of Wales Theatre. Thank you to our longtime major sponsor, Visa Canada. I would like to thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, and Bulgari, for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto, for their continued support. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net net backslash vote. We would like to thank Prime Video and Amazon Studios for providing us with this film. Thank you. <laughs> and the production would also like to thank Jeff Blackburn, Mike Hopkins, Jen Salke, and Julie Rappaport. My Policeman is written by Ron Nyswater, Oscar and BAFTA nominated for his screenplay of Philadelphia. And he has beautifully adapted the screenplay for My Policeman from the novel by Beth Ann Roberts. My Policeman is the latest film from director Michael Grandage, whose previous films include Genius, MGC Presents Red, and for television, the live production of King Lear at the National Theatre. Michael Grandage directs My Policeman with restraint and understated elegance. It is a story told from three perspectives, all of it made real through the work of a remarkable acting ensemble who create a powerful portrait of characters grappling with life-altering decisions they must make and, 40 years later, the still urgent and compelling outcome of those earlier choices. In appreciation of this balanced and quietly powerful collection of performances, the cast of My Policeman has been chosen to receive the 2022 TIFF Tribute Award for Ensemble Performance. This award will be bestowed in person at our TIFF Tribute Awards Gala later this evening. The cast members receiving the award are Emma Corrin and Gina McKee, who play Marion, David Dawson and Rupert Everett, who play Patrick, and Harry Styles and Linus Roach, who play Tom. We're very pleased to have an opportunity after the screening to have some on-stage conversation with our guests, but please join me in welcoming to Toronto director Michael Grandich. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful to be here at the Toronto International Film Festival to world premiere this film in front of you all tonight. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the team uh, behind the film, starting with our producers, five wonderful producers. Uh, first of all, Philip Hurd. And Cora Palfrey. And Sarah Schechter. and Greg Berlanti and Robbie Rogers. This film is based on an extraordinarily beautiful novel by Bethan Roberts and it was adapted for the screen by the most wonderful screenwriter we've had working with us. I'd like to introduce you to Ron Nicewarner. This has to take his and now, if I may, I'd like to introduce you to the cast. Um, we're, we're delighted to have, uh, that they have received this tribute award tonight. It's the most wonderful honor, and our thanks to uh, TIFF. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Linus Roach. Who's next? Who's next? Uh, uh, and Gina McKee. And Rupert Everett.
David Dawson. Emma Corrin. And Harry Styles. I'd like to also thank the team at Indiana Productions and everyone at Amazon Studios and Prime Video. Jeff Blackburn, Jennifer Sulkey, Julie Rappaport, Mike Hopkins, Scott Founders, and everyone connected with that company. They've been the most wonderful partners to work with. Thank you very much. Um, we, we have all spent uh, we've all spent most of today talking to people about this film in preparation for this world premiere tonight. Everybody has something different to say, which is great, and I hope you will all have something different to take away from it. It's a film about love, it's a film about regret, it's a film about societal change. It's set in 1957 and 1999, and we're watching it through the prism of 2022. And as a gay man born into the period where this film was set, I am very proud of the huge advances that the LGBTQ plus community have made over many years. But, and I'm, I'm, also, I'm also aware, I say that at a, quite a fragile time as well, and I'd like this film to be part of a bigger debate um, as well. Um, but the best way I've realized today in talking about it is always to say something personal about why you, why you came to the film in the first place. And for me, that's just sharing one tiny thing with you that happened very early on in my life. When I was a 14-year-old boy, a very young 14-year-old boy, uh, somebody spat the word queer at me in the playground at school. And I came home and I asked my father what a queer was. I had no idea. And he said, a queer son is a very nasty word for a homosexual. This is in the 1970s, remember. <laughs> and that didn't help, actually, because I had to say, what's a homosexual? <laughs> and there was a very, very long pause, which I remember and can remember even now, standing here in front of all of you today. And at the end of it, in what I now consider to be a supreme piece of parenting, he said, a homosexual son is a free spirit. <laughs> and on that, I'd like to please enjoy my policeman. Thank you very much indeed. It's wonderful, yes? <laughs> so, we're very pleased to have the opportunity to have a few moments to speak with our guests, but we are very short on time, so we're going to do a moderated conversation quickly here on stage, but we're going to get some terrific conversation from our folks. So please join me in welcoming, as I turn around and graciously move, Linus Roach. Rupert Everett. Gina McKee. David Dawson. Harry Styles. Emma Corrin and director Michael Grandage. Congratulations to you all on a fantastic film. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for this. 
So Michael, um, you can see that there is a lot of emotion and a lot of appreciation of this film you've created. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to cooperate and to collaborate with this incredible group of people here? Um, I can happily talk about that because uh, <laughs> I think I've got the most wonderful group of people I've ever worked with. I was, I was at college with Linus. I've talked to Rupert about working with him for most of my career. Gina and I have worked together a great deal, and David Dawson and I have worked together a great deal. So it's basically I've hired all my friends at that <laughs> end at one. Bit. And Harry and Emma both came on board to lead the company from the very beginning. <laughs> Um, the idea really was to create, uh, as you've now all seen, three characters played by six actors. And it was an amazing opportunity for all of us to talk in advance of the film about who we are at 20 and who we are 40 years later. And for the film to investigate properly um, memory and time and the way it works. And also, as I said, uh, at the beginning of the film, for me, uh, I was attracted to something that really looked and investigated societal change over that huge period. Um, and I think the film offered us that as well. But no, it was an amazing team to collaborate with. Um, I would like to ask now questions of the two groups of actors, um, the 1950s, as I think of you, and the 1990s. Um, so for Emma, Harry, and David, this is a story about friendship between three people. Um, how did you bond together as actors, as friends, to make that seem authentic on, st on screen? Any of you? Um, we were very lucky, because we had uh, about two, three weeks rehearsal, which is very rare in film. And um, I think because Michael, history and theatre and all of that. Um, we had, yeah, we had three weeks to sort of break down all the scenes and talk about them. A lot of talking about them, which is lovely. And yeah, just figure it out. And it meant that when it came to it, we all felt very safe and comfortable and yeah. Yeah, I think um, I can speak from you know, my experience. I felt very lucky to get to work with <clears throat> David and Emma. I think you know, when, you're, when you have the opportunity to work with people um, that you just feel good being around, they're both wonderful people to be around. Um, so I think having a, a base of a real friendship outside of the characters obviously allows for, you know, kind of the friendship scenes, if you will, it doesn't require much acting, yeah. but, and then in the kind of more intense uh, scenes, there's, there's a lot of trust and a safety there. So, you know, all of that kind of benefits, I think, from just a, a real, um, connection with the people you work with, which I felt very lucky to have during this project. Great. Yeah, early on, I think we, we promised each other that we'd look after each other through the process, and I think um, that's what made this a, a special team to be a part of. Yeah. And to our 1990s. <laughs> um, can you speak a little bit, each of you, about what informed your performances, and how did you pre prepare to play the older versions of these people? Um, the uh, 1950s sequences were shot, largely shot first, and so we were very lucky to be able to view some of the material. Um, I think each of us got about three or four scenes of our counterparts that we could watch, study, use if, if, we, if that was useful. But our conduit was Michael, and he coordinated the two eras, so that was really helpful. And Michael kind of liberated us as well because he made a very good point that you're not the same person you are yeah. 40 years later. So in a way, you didn't have to be the exact mirror of your counterpart. Right. You know, Harry, for me, was the young man with all of his future ahead of him and all that possibility and color and potential. And then I'm the man frozen in time mm. who's living with that heartache and heartbreak. And so... I just, you just contemplated that dimension, but again, to, you know, Michael is the one that brought us into the same world. Even though there were two very distinct periods and worlds, it was one universe that we were all in, and Michael's responsible for the orchestration of that. And I suppose, for me, in one sense, I, I, I was playing some, someone who'd had a stroke, uh, which is something I haven't had, 
and um, <laughs> yet, thankfully, um, so it was. Yes. A, uh, I had to. It was a kind of act of imagination as well, on top of uh, you know feeling that I. I think you know fairly different from David. I think so much had happened in Patrick's life after the film finishes, really uh, that dr that kind of drags the rest of his life into towards his stroke in a way. I suppose. Right. Well, I know it's been incredibly brief, and I know some of you have planes to catch. I just want to thank you so much for the pleasure. Well, some of you, maybe. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> but I do want you to know that it's been a great privilege and pleasure for us to premiere this film here. It means a lot. We really love the film. Thank you so much to all of you, thank you for being thank you here. Thank you. thank you for being with us. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. One of the crazy